Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we're going to summarize artifacts and events from the Paleolithic era to the ancient Near East. Humankind originated in Africa over 30,000 years ago. The word Paleolithic is from the Greek word paleo, meaning old, and lithos, meaning stone. From Africa, humans migrated to other continents, leaving artifacts along the way. Perhaps the most well-known Paleolithic art is in the Hall of the Bulls in the caves in Lascaux, France. More than 17,000 years ago, hunter-gatherers covered the walls of the caves with images of deer, horses, and bison. However, these animals were not staples of these hunter-gatherer groups, whose diet consisted instead of smaller game, fish, eggs, fruits, nuts, berries, and edible roots. Why then did these uh, people paint these animals? In the absence of written records, we'll never know for certain. Many of the animals are depicted as colored silhouettes, while others are shown as contour drawings or outlines. These differences in style suggest that images were created by different artists, perhaps generations apart. These images are in a series of remote caverns that are not easily accessible from the entrance of the cave, and they are completely in the dark. When archaeologists first found Stone Age statuettes of women, they called them Venuses, even though this is misleading since the concept of Venus didn't come along until tens of thousands of years later during Greek civilization. It was found in Willendorf, Austria, and is therefore known as the Venus of Willendorf. Most Paleolithic depictions of humankind were female. This particular piece shows an exaggeration of female qualities. The breasts and hips are proportionally large and her braids are somewhat defined. As with all prehistoric art, why this is so is a mystery, but many attribute these characteristics as signifying the importance of fertility to these hunter-gatherer groups. Subsistence living, as you can imagine, would have been wrought with perils, so the ability to have children and to grow as a group would have been really important. The largest Paleolithic sculptures known to date are these two relief sculptures of bison found at another location in France. A relief sculpture is a sculpture that is attached on one side to a surface as opposed to something that is freestanding or in the round. Notice that these animals, like the animals in the Hall of the Bull, are also shown in strict profile. Paleolithic artists gathered the clay for these sculptures from different sites and then carried it here where they fashioned and shaped it into these relief sculptures. This piece also shows a bison in strict profile, but this time with a twist. The animal is still depicted uh, from the side, but the head is turned now 180 degrees upon itself to lick its flank. And this tool is a spear thrower, which was used to enhance the force and the accuracy with which a spear could be thrown. Around 9000 BCE, the ice that covered much of northern Europe during the Paleolithic period melted as the climate warmed. The sea level rose more than 300 feet, and England was separated from continental Europe. Over the next few thousand years, at different parts of the globe, the Neolithic era began. The key distinction is a transition from food gathering to food production. Agriculture and the domestication of animals for food and for work first took hold in Anatolia and Mesopotamia, an area that roughly corresponds with modern-day Turkey, Syria, Iraq, and Iran. This shift from hunter-gatherer groups to sedentary settlements slowly spread to other regions and continents. Perhaps the most well-known Neolithic monument is Stonehenge. It is located on the Salisbury Plain in southern England. It is a megalith, which is a designation given to Neolith Neolithic architectural uh, constructs and characteristics of moving and stacking massive rough cut stones. It is arranged in post and lintels arranged into two circles, a larger outer circle and a smaller inner circle. Theories as to its use uh, range widely, including its use as a funerary site where the dead were cremated, an astronomical observatory, or a center for healing that attracted the sick or dying from all over the region. One remarkable aspect is that it functions as an accurate solar calendar. 
whatever its use, the feat of constructing such a complex monument speaks to the advancements in technology and resources at that time in that region. Mesopotamia is a Greek word that means the land between rivers, the rivers being the Tigris and the Euphrates. One of the important ancient civilizations is Sumer. Ancient Sumer roughly corresponds to southern Iraq and was not a unified nation, but was rather comprised of independent city-states under the protection of different Mesopotamian deities. Rulers were thought to be chosen as a god's representative on earth and were thus semi-divine. Division of labor and city-states, or rather the creation of city-states, were very important advancements. Another advancement was the evolution of writing. The oldest written documents known are Sumerian records of administrative acts and commercial transactions. They recorded inventories, in, excuse me, inventories into soft clay with a sharp tool called a stylus, and then the clay tablets hardened. Earliest records are written in pictographs from the top down and were read from right to left. With the invention of writing came, of course, the recording of early forms of literature, the most famous of which is the Epic of Gilgamesh, who was the legendary king of Uruk. The Sumerians built large temples called ziggurats that reflected the importance of their gods in their daily lives. One of the most important existing Neo-Sumerian structures is the ziggurat at Ur. It is constructed with baked bricks laid in bitumen, which is an asphalt-like substance. Votive figures represented individual people rather than deities. They clasp their hands in a gesture of prayer and usually hold small beakers or cups for libations to honor the gods. They are relatively small and carved from limestone. The oversized eyes inlaid with shell symbolize the wakefulness and vigilance of the worshippers. Babylon was a city-state that came into prominence with the rise of King Hammurabi in 1792 to 1750 BCE, some time after Sumer. Hammurabi created nearly 300 laws to rule his land, all of which are inscribed in detail on the bottom portion of this piece. After the Babylonians, the Assyrians gained dominance in the region. Assyrian kings cultivated an image that was merciless to their foes, but forgiving to those who submitted to their will. The Assyrians constructed fortified palaces. Guarding the gate were enormous limestone creatures called lamassu. These are examples of composite animals, that is, a man and an animal put together. Here we see the head of a man, the body of a bull, and the wings of a bird. The sculptures combine a front view of the animal at rest with a side view of an animal in motion. In other words, from the side, you can see all four legs as if it's walking, but from the front view, you can only see two. This is another example of a relief sculpture. It stands out in relief to the wall and is part of the architecture rather than being a freestanding sculpture. After the Assyrians came the Neo-Babylonians, the most famous of these kings was Nebuchadnezzar II, whose exploits are described in the Bible. Its enormous ziggurat was immortalized as the Tower of Babel. One of its most important features is the Ishtar Gate. It consists of an arch-shaped opening flanked by towers and features animals both real and imaginary on its tiled walls. I hope you enjoyed this very brief summary of Paleolithic art through the art of the ancient Near East. I encourage you all to pursue a deeper understanding of these topics through your own reading and research. You can find more summaries of art history at my website, HelenLowry.com. Have a great day, everyone.